Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about uniform circular motion, which is a special type of circular motion. So this animation will show us what uniform circular motion, or UCM, is. If we have a car that's driving around in a circle at a constant speed, that is UCM. So here we can see the velocity vector, which is this green vector, the length isn't changing. The direction is, but the length of the vector isn't. So it is driving at a constant speed. Now here, we can see the velocity and the acceleration vectors. So when we're in uniform circular motion, our acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. And we can see that it's always pointing into the circle. So our velocity is called tangent to the circle. If we draw a line, it only touches the circle once. And if you're sitting in the car, you're just looking straight ahead you would see going out of the circle, you would see that tangent line. So here we have another example of a uniform circular motion. An object moving in a circular path at constant speed is in uniform circular motion. So the velocity vector, again, is always tangent to that path, and the speed is constant, but velocity itself is not constant. Remember, because velocity is a vector, both direction and magnitude matter. So because our direction is changing, by definition, our velocity is also changing. And a changing velocity, we call acceleration. So here is our acceleration. It's the change in velocity over the change in time. So because the velocity keeps changing, we have that acceleration. We can calculate it as v squared over r. So that is our centripetal acceleration formula. Now, if you imagine a tennis ball on a string that you're swinging around. If at any point the string breaks, the tennis ball is going to keep going in that direction. It's going to keep going in that tangential velocity vector. So that string is what's keeping it in the circle. That string is what's changing the velocity. It's what's accelerating it. The string is always accelerating it into the circle. The velocity keeps changing its direction, and the direction that is changing is towards inside the circle, so we call that radially inward. So centripetal acceleration always points radially inward, so it points towards the radius into the center of the circle, and has a value of the speed squared divided by that radius. So a little bit more about acceleration. Again, it's the velocity vector is always tangent to the circle. The acceleration points radially inward. We can say that something is moving with an angular speed. So here, in this example, our angular speed would be counterclockwise. This dot is moving in a counterclockwise circle, and we represent that with the Greek letter omega. That's a lowercase omega. And we can calculate it by dividing the speed by the radius. So that's the magnitude of the velocity vector divided by the radius. And we also have something that we call the period, which we represent with a capital T. That's the amount of time it takes to make one full rotation. We call that a period. And since we know that speed is equal to distance over time, we can rearrange that like magic to have time equals distance over speed. So we can find a formula for our period, since it's a time. It's the distance that this dot travels divided by its speed. Its distance is 2 pi r, and its speed is the speed v. Now we say that the distance is 2 pi r because it's traveling one circumference of the circle. And that is the formula for circumference of a circle, pi times the diameter, or 2 pi r. So because we know that v divided by r is omega, here we have r over v, so that's 1 over omega. So we can rearrange that to say that the period is 2 pi divided by omega, or 2 pi divided by the angular speed. And we know that acceleration is a, and we represent v. We specified that it's centripetal acceleration by putting a subscript c. Since we know that that is equal to v squared over r, we can do some substitutions using these formulas, and we can get that acceleration is equal to omega squared times r, or this mess of 4 pi squared r over period squared, and all of these are equally valid and will all give you the centripetal acceleration.